Russia is still reeling from the attack at a concert that killed more than 130 people. ISIS-K, a wing of the Islamic State, claimed responsibility for the attack, which also injured more than 180 people. But Moscow is doing its best to tie Ukraine to the attacks and drum up more support for its war effort. Russian forces launched a massive volley of missiles and drones against Ukraine following the terrorist attack, seemingly in reprisal. U.S. intelligence agencies say they have proof confirming the ISIS-K claim, but it's expected Putin and propagandists in Russian state media will still push the Ukraine narrative as a means to keep up recruiting numbers. Ukraine started warning weeks ago that Russia was preparing for a large summer offensive. And two days before the attack at the concert hall, Russia's defensive minister, Sergei Shoigu, announced the formation of two new armies this year. The British Ministry of Defense said it's not clear what type of units will make up the new armies, but it's a safe bet they'll include mechanized, armored, artillery, and logistics brigades. The UK says Russia's recruiting efforts continue to be successful, so the new armies should not have a staffing problem. But if recent history holds true, it's likely the new armies will run into the same problems as the current armies. Specifically, the UK's Defense Intelligence Agency cites limited training and over-reliance on what they politely call legacy vehicles and a wealth of infrastructure issues that are creating resource problems. Russian equipment losses just passed the 15,000 mark, meaning Russian forces are driving around decades-old tanks, trucks, and armored vehicles, all of which don't perform nearly as well as more modern models, but can still be effective in large numbers. While Ukraine's preparations for the pending Russian offensive continue all along the front lines, in the air, Ukrainian drone crews are finding new success against Russian oil refineries. Since the start of the year, there were attacks on at least seven facilities. The four shutdowns amount to a nearly 7% drop in daily output. Despite international sanctions, oil continues to be a primary source of income for Moscow, which is why so many military analysts call the refineries legitimate targets. Russia said it would put Pantsir air defense systems around refineries to protect them, but that means fewer air defense systems elsewhere, like shipyards, where Ukrainian long-range cruise missiles continue to add to the collection of Russian ships at the bottom of the Black Sea. But a new rail line might make Russia's Black Sea fleet unnecessary, at least in terms of resupply. Vladimir Putin recently said a new 60-kilometer stretch of railroad was just completed between Kolosky and Komyanka in occupied Ukraine, which is this area right about here. Now, that rail line is supposed to tie into existing rail lines that lead to Melitopol and to Rostov-on-Don. Rostov on Don in uh, southern Russia is the capital of the southern military district. It's also the main hub for resupply for troops in southern Ukraine and occupied Crimea. Now, according to Putin, this rail line will eventually extend down into Crimea to Sevastopol, where the Russian Black Sea Fleet is uh, headquartered. Now, this whole supply line is meant as a backup to the Kerch Bridge supply line which goes from Russia into occupied Crimea. Now, dating back to last year during the Ukrainian counteroffensive, Ukraine's primary um, goal, if you will, was to, was to cut off troops, Russian troops, in southern Ukraine by pushing, and by pushing from their territory to the Sea of Azov. Uh, Ukraine also heavily attacked the Azov Bridge last year. And again, that's in an effort to kind of trap the, the Russian forces that are in southern Ukraine and occupied Crimea. Why do they want to do that? Well, for mili many military analysts, that's the best way for Ukraine to win. If they can kind of hold this area, cut it off from resupply from Russia, then Ukraine has the best bargaining chip possible to force possibly a Russian withdrawal from occupied territories and potentially force the end of the war sometime within the next year, maybe two years.